Sea of Thieves can be a quite daunting game to new players. With a constant flow of content and metas, it can be difficult to lift yourself off of your feet and get sailing out on the seas. In today's video, I'm going to be providing a complete beginner's guide, so without further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into the video, make sure to join over 400 members in the Mystic Penthouse Discord server to speak with other members of this amazing community. If you'd like to join the Penthouse suite along with so many others, visit the link in the description. If you would also like to support the channel and myself in making more content, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button for exclusive rewards. Finally, make sure to subscribe to the channel, it's free, and because of YouTube's recent failed recommendations, turn on notifications, I would love to reach my goal of 10k subscribers, so each and every one of you can help by subscribing. First things first, I'll be breaking the game down into three core pillars. Or areas, world generated encounters, player generated encounters, and finally PvP. Each core pillar feeds into each other, allowing players to be in a constant loop without it becoming too repetitive and allowing players to create their own adventures within that loop. For example, you could be on a gold hoarder vault voyage when suddenly a megalodon appears just as you approach your destination. This megalodon stalls your ship for long enough for an enemy sloop on the horizon to approach and you begin a naval battle for your hard earned loot. In between each players, you also have downtime, time to get supplies, loot, and explore the Sea of Thieves. This time will vary for you in every single server. Finding yourself in servers where you are constantly battling with others and different servers where you can just enjoy the sea breeze. Okay, so world generated encounters. These are things which can be randomly generated by the world such as world events like skull forts, ash and winds, skeleton fleets, and that floating bubblehead in the sky that won't shut up for five minutes. It can also be things as simple as ocean crawlers jumping out of the sand at your feet, or skeleton ships and megalodons randomly spawning on your ship, ready to sink you. Each of these events comes with their own set of rewards, which will allow you to progress your reputation with trading companies within the game. These being the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, the Merchant Alliance, the Reapers Faction, which we will also talk about later, and the Hunter's Call. By leveling these companies up, you will be taking steps towards your journey to Pirate Legend, which is achieved when you're at least level 50 in any of the trading companies within the game. Usually, world generated encounters are better for leveling up as new and existing players as they come with their very own unique challenges which reward players handsomely with a lot more loot than you will get out of player generated encounters as a brand new player, but this is not always the case. World generated encounters under the world events category also have a unique property in the sense that they are beacons in the sky which other players on your server will be able to identify and just might sail over with bad or good intentions. So make sure you have your eyes in the back of your head when doing these. As a new player, you may also find these more difficult as you will need to be efficient in doing these so you're not wasting much time in the Ferry of the Damned and with your ship in the bottom of the sea. However, practice through trial by fire will allow you to become much more of a salty double gunning sea dog at a far quicker rate. In other words, do not be afraid to give it a go and never see your boat at the bottom of the ocean as a bad thing. Use it as a practice and try to understand what went wrong and how you could have done things differently to prevent that. Whether that's raising your sails to stop the boat rather than keeping your anchor down, or it's just checking the horizon every now and then. These are all things which we will develop in time. Moving on to player generated encounters. These are things which the player can generate such as quests, tool tales, and even in some cases the Fort the Damned. PvP does pretty much come under this category, however I want to cover PvP as a separate section of this video as it is a way more in-depth portion of the game itself. For the most part, player generated encounters are what you can use to enjoy your downtime within the game, going on quests for the different factions, completing any of the range of tool tales the game has to offer. Tool Tales act as the main story of the game and can be found on your Tool Tales section of your reputation. I won't say too much on these as these are really really super fun 
to give a go with friends or on your own for the first time. Quests specifically are a great way to spend your time in trying to level up your trading companies. These companies being the Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls and Merchant Alliance. Athena if you're already Pirate Legend, but why would you be watching this video? Anyway, for Gold Hoarders, you'll be able to complete treasure map and riddle voyages and the what I like to call specialty voyages, for this company it will be vaults. Voyages have their own unique properties. For example, the vaults give you a wayfinder to locate pieces of a map. You then find the vault key and then unlock a vault filled with treasure. And the other voyages for gold hoarders will give you treasure maps and riddles to locate buried treasure across the different islands of the Sea of Thieves. Order of Souls offer skeleton bounty voyages where you will locate captains to take down and claim their skulls to trade in. And ghost ship voyages where you hunt down phantom ships in order to receive ghost loot. Finally, the Merchant Alliance, which has the most of options of any trading company in terms of what to do. These being animal deliveries, where you capture animals for specific outposts. Cargo runs, where you take valuable cargo from one place to another. And finally, lost shipment voyages, where you will follow a route and unlock clues to find a lost shipwreck underwater filled with loot. You can also do commodity runs, but they aren't a specific voyage per se. However, they do reward reputation and money. Each of these quests allow you to create your own adventure within the game. To learn the objective, experience a wide variety of ways to reach the end goal of becoming Pirate Legend. Be aware this adventure could be interrupted at any point during the game from other players, so once again make sure you keep a lookout for other ships, whether they are friendly or not. Moving on then to the final section of this video, PvP. It is a huge part of this game, whether you like it or you don't. No matter what you do, there is always a chance a ship will sail over and initiate a fight. This could be naval, meaning shooting cannons, trying to sink someone else's ship, or physical fighting with any of the four weapons in the game. The best advice I would give to someone trying to learn PvP is to break it down. Start by teaching yourself how to prioritize your ship, when to bail out water with buckets, when to recover the hulls, when to patch the mast, where to shoot the cannons, how to effectively steer at an advantage to another ship. And there are two main ways of practicing this in my opinion. Number one, flame heart or skeleton fleets. And number two, just hop for reapers or play arena to build up experience. Find where you go wrong in these fights and aim to make less and less mistakes each time. In terms of physical combat, don't pay attention to people saying you can't double gun or you can't use a sword. Ultimately, the weapons are there to use however you choose. But in terms of practicing, take on arena, try to board people's ships, try to kill them in as many ways as possible. The best advice I would give in this field is to never be afraid of retreating to heal. Make sure you have food registered to an easily accessible keybind so you can access it mid-fight. The longer you're in a fight, well, you're not dead. Uh, and that's an advantage, especially in fights where you have three people on another brig, distracted by yourself, and your own ship is opening fire on that boat, it's near impossible to manage you and repairs if you're staying alive and taking out the enemy. I'll be making a super in-depth PvP guide, so make sure you stay tuned for more on this subject. With that, I hope you have a greater understanding of the game of Sea of Thieves. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, check out the other videos on my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.